All right, continuing on in our New Orleans tradition, because everybody's digging it, and I'm getting a lot of questions on how to function in that, because it's not a real common thing. Unless you're from there, it's just not real common to just, you know, oh, I'm gonna play some second line. A lot of people don't even know what it is. But it's real cool to throw in, especially in like, you know, kind of funk tunes, it's cool to throw it in as a fill or as a solo section or something like that. Or if you're in a jazz tune, like a, like a swung funk jazz tune, it's really cool to throw some second line type feel in it. Um, so I've had some people wanting to know some authentic uh, New Orleans type fills. So let me explain here. Uh, these fills are gonna be somewhat linear. They will always involve the kick drum in seemingly a little bit odd places because traditionally this music was played by two drummers, snare drummer and a bass drummer. Okay, so they they naturally were linear because they you know unless they had wires going from each other's head you know they're not going to know when the other one's going to play so they're kind of trying to fill in the gaps and play with each other so it's this real cool kind of you know he played then he played then play together and then they, um, they are also is a lot of buzzing in there um, and any technique you have throw it out the window okay excuse me again there goes there goes lunch. Um, because these guys were not school drummers. They just picked up the sticks. They held them wrong. They played buzzes wrong, but it sounded killer, okay? So you have to loosen up. You have to, you have to, you know, take a nap and wake up while you're still groggy, come play it, or drink a beer or something, and then come play it, because that's the feel. You just gotta be really loose with it. Um, so some typical feels, there's no, you know, this is the feel for New Orleans. But there's some that recur, and there's kind of parameters that you can play with. Again, a little bit sloppy, um, linear between the hand and foot, uh, and some of them, sometimes they go into a fill that straightens out into 16th notes and, and, uh, and it's kind of cool. The one thing you want to remember is when you come out of that fill, you don't usually hit one because second line goes to the four uh, uh, or the end of the four, however you're counting it it pushes to that last beat so right so it pushes to that last beat so whenever you're playing it When you're playing it, you're gonna also push to that, that, that last beat. So the first fill I'm gonna do is this one. Now another way to do that would be to buzz it because I said buzzing's popular so Another cool fill is on the floor tom. So it's going to go you're going to keep the upbeats on the hi hat um, and it's going to go like this. One yet a two yet a three yet a four and so like this. Another one that's popular is straightening, straightening out the 16th notes. It'll sound like this. It's another one that's popular, like this. You can also do that with one with with one stick and you can press down on the drum with the other stick or you can do um, it's almost like alternating 16th but buzzing the left hand so it sounds like this another one you can do is buzz the 16th notes. So you can just play 16th notes and kind of bring it up, bring it down, bring it up, so. Like that.
So there's some cool parameters to uh, to go by as far as you know how to play some New Orleans fields. If y'all like these fields, I can post some more of them, come up with some different things. I just wanted to kind of give you the parameters that you go in. Again, linear between the hand and foot. Sometimes the foot hitting with the hand, sometimes the foot hitting after the hand. Um, accenting that last beat, go, go, bow, and not one. Lots of buzzes, and sometimes they straighten out the fills, so they sound kind of cool. Hope that helps you. Talk at you soon.